Hello, and welcome to the Determining Empirical Formulas uh, video. Um, you got two choices this time to watch videos. I got the um, is it uh, Melissa Maribel video that I posted up. That in two, almost three minutes, less than three minutes, she goes over how to do these problems. Boom, boom, boom. She doesn't explain why. She just shows you how to do them. If you're understanding you know, how things are going, you don't want to spend a lot of time, you can go over those. My video here is going to go into a little detail as to what we're doing why we're doing it, then I'm going to give you three examples. And you don't have to sit through the whole thing. But I'm going to give you three examples of how the different problems can be done. Okay, The first example is going to be a, a very basic one. Uh, second example is going to be a little more work because we're going to use percentages versus grams. Uh, and that just takes one extra real quick step. And then the third one is when you've got a compound made up of more than two elements. Okay, so we're determining empirical formulas for um, for substances. So let me go over um, what we're doing here, um, what the basic idea here is, All right, So we are, we are having a, we've got a compound in here. We're trying to figure out what its empirical formula is. And as we went over in class the other day, I want to remind you that an empirical formula is a chemical formula here I have right here chemical formula that shows the smallest whole number ratios of each element in a compound. So, you know, how many of element one for every element, uh, every atoms of, of element two. Um, and it's just a ratio um, as opposed to a molecular formula that is basically a chemical formula that shows how many atoms of each element in a molecule of that compound. And we saw uh, sometimes that molecular formulas, and empirical formulas are the same, like an H2O because the basic molecular formula is two hydrogens and one oxygen. So the ratio is two hydrogens to one oxygen, same thing. But in some larger molecules, there's multiples of each that then can go ahead and be cut down to a smaller ratio, N2O4. In that molecule, there's two nitrogens and four hydrogens. Um, that gives you a ratio of two to one, right? twice as many oxygens as hydrogens. So its empirical formula is NO2, even though its molecular formula is N2O4. And we're going to be learning in these uh, next couple of days how to get the empirical formula, then from there, how to get the molecular formula. Uh, here's another one, C6H18O3. In one molecule of this substance here, there's six carbons, 18 hydrogens, and three oxygens in one molecule. The ratio, though, is two to six to one, because you can divide six, 18, and three. They're all divisible by three. And so you can divide them uh, by three, and you'll get a two to six to one ratio. So you got a substance here. And this substance is a compound made up of, let's say, two elements in this case. It could be three or more. but And you do the problems the same way, but um, this is kind of the way uh, we'll, we'll start off with just two. So it, I have a, I color coded them here, so I don't know what element we got, but it's a yellow element and a black element. And if we go ahead and if we break it up and if we turn it into um, uh, their elements, if we do a um, decomposition reaction, we can break it up into the first element and the second element, right? We'll call this element A and element B. Um, and then we can actually measure how many grams we had of it of element A and how many grams of element B. Now, uh, grams of element A and element B are, um, you know, they don't give you the ratio of atoms because it could be that even though there's more grams of element A than element B, element A is a bigger uh, element. The atoms are bigger, heavier, and the element B isn't. So there could be equal number of atoms. There could be more atoms of A than B. There could be more atoms of B than A because every atom, every element has a different atomic mass, right? Every atom has different, uh, every, every element has different size atoms and different weight elements. So um, just from the grams, we can't tell. What we're looking for uh, when we're doing an uh, empirical formula is we're looking for the ratio of atoms of element A to atoms of element B. Okay, and that's, that's what we get right here. So when, whenever you see a uh, ratio, I mean, a, a empirical formula, you're looking at something like this, like, you know, give you an example of an empirical formula, CaCl2 or AlF3. Okay. This one is giving you a two to one ratio, two chlorines for every calcium. This one's giving you a three to one ratio, three 
fluorines for every aluminum, right? And it's not always the metal that's uh, less. You could have, you know, Na2S. Okay, there's twice as many sodiums as uh, sulfurs. So in here, what you're basically saying is that uh, atoms of chlorine over atoms of calcium is two to one ratio. So if you got the ratio of atoms of chlorine to atoms of calcium, uh, that would give you a two to one ratio. Uh, here, atoms of fluorine to atoms of aluminum is a three to one ratio. Okay, and that three here, if I can figure out this, if I didn't know the ratio here, and I do because of their positive and negative charges, but let's say I didn't because some, not all substances have set uh, ratios between the two elements. Um, if I didn't know the subscripts, but I counted the atoms of fluorine and atoms of aluminum and found that there's three times as many atoms of fluorine as atoms of aluminum, then um, I would, you know, I could go ahead and... Uh, that would tell me that my subscript for fluorine is three, All right? Atoms of fluorine to atoms of aluminum is three to one. Here, I would get that the atoms of sodium per atoms of sulfur is two to one also, okay? So if we knew these ratios, we can come up with the subscripts. Because from the right now we're looking for the subscripts, we're giving these ratios, but these things are related. So if we knew the ratios, we could come up with the subscripts. All right. So if I gave you a, a uh, let's say we had a sample of calcium chloride, then there would be twice as many chlorines as as calciums. So let's say there was um, oh I don't know let's let's use an easier number, 8.0 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine, I would expect there to be half as many, 4.0 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of calcium. Okay, That might be what we find in a sample, you know, because usually we don't just count two, uh, one or two chlorine atoms at a time or calcium atoms at a time. We count, you know, bunches, right, moles. Uh, one thing to point out is that the, this two to one is not just an atom ratio but it's actually a mole ratio. Let me go ahead and show you that because this is gonna make our problems much easier. It's gonna save us a step. Um, basically what we're gonna be doing, the problems that I wanna show you is we're gonna to wanna to look for the, atom, the, the ratio of atoms to give us our subscript. Right? So that way we know, right? This eight times 10 to the 23rd, let's say we, we were able to count the atoms of chlorine and the atoms of calcium to try to figure out the ratio of chlorine atoms to calcium atoms. You take the chlorine atoms, which is the bigger number, divided by the atoms of calcium, which is the smaller number, and you get 8 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 4 times 10 to the 23rd. You get 2, right? 2 to 1. That means there's twice as many chlorines as atoms of calcium. And that's what's going to give us our 2 to 1, and therefore we'll know that the chlorine is, oops, I didn't put a pen here. The chlorine is twice as many. The, chlorine, the subscript for chlorine is 2. The subscript for calcium is 1. Okay, um, let's do this. Let's turn these atoms of chlorine and atoms of calcium, let's turn them into moles. Okay, so in order to turn them into moles, you know that what we would do, we would, we would uh, multiply, uh, and this is the kind of like a conversion within a conversion. Uh, if I had eight times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine, then I can go ahead and multiply by uh, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And so what I get here is 8 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is going to give me 1.33. Someone's looking for me. Either that or my food's ready. 1.33 moles. So... 8 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine is 1.33 moles. Now let's turn these 4 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of calcium also into moles. So at the bottom here, I'm going to convert 1 mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 
times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And if I do that, I get 4 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's going to give me 0 0.664. 0 0.664 moles. And here I'm going to have moles. This is moles of calcium. This is moles of chlorine. That's a seal. Okay. So uh, you'll notice that if you take 1.33 divided over 0 0.664, what I get is, let's see, 1.33 divided by, I'm doing this in my calculator, 0 0.664 gives me 2.001, basically 2.0. 2.001, okay. So you will notice that this ratio here uh, is a two to one ratio, right? In other words, the moles of chlorine, this ratio is the moles of chlorine over the moles of calcium, is a two to one ratio, just like it was over here, okay? And the reason why the, this is the ratio here of moles of chlorine to moles of calcium. The reason why this 2.0 is the same as this 2.0 it's because there was twice as many atoms of chlorine here as atoms of calcium. The mole ratio is going to be the same. And that's that's the key that I'm trying to show you here. Whether you take the atoms of each element or the moles of each element, it gives you the same ratio. Why? Because to turn atoms to moles, you have to divide both of them by the same number. So whenever you take two numbers and divide each one by the same number, you're still going to have the same ratio. And so that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be important in doing our problems here. Because if I go back to here, you'll see that what we want to do is we want to know how many atoms of element A to atoms of element B, right? So we want a ratio of A to B. Moles of element A to moles of element B. In this case, A was chlorine, B was calcium. And really doesn't matter. Uh, it really doesn't matter whether you're talking about the metal or the non-metal. Um, I think it's easier just to go ahead and put the one with more atoms on top and uh, less atoms on the bottom, so you get a ratio. And the whatever the ratio is, that's how many to one of the um, element on top. And that atoms ratio is the same as the moles ratio. So whether you get a ratio of moles, or whether you get a ratio of atoms, you're going to um, you're going to uh, get your ratio of element A to element B, right? or element B to element A, whichever one. Uh, whichever way kind of it works out. So go, the reason why that's important is because going back over here, if you're given grams of both elements, you can turn them into atoms of both elements. But that would take two steps. That would take the extra step. First, you have to turn grams to moles for element A and then turn it from moles to molecules of element A. And then you have to turn the grams to moles of element B and then you have to turn the moles of element B into atoms of element B. Right? Uh, and then you can get a ratio of, of atoms of A to atoms of B. But since the mole ratio is the same, why take the extra step? Why turn them into atoms of A and B? If you're given grams, it just takes one step to turn them into moles. And if we compare the moles of A to moles of B, it's the same ratio as atoms of A and atoms of B. And I'll show you in the samples that uh, we'll be doing right now. Right? So... Um, we're going to do some sample problems, and basically that's what we're doing. We're going to take the grams of each element, turn them into moles, then compare the moles of each of those. All right, see, this is what uh, Melissa Maribel doesn't go over, but, um, you know, it's uh, that, that's a good, nice, quick one if you don't you know, need to go into details. Then once you have that, basically there's steps, right? So um, we'll, we'll go over the steps here uh, on how you do that, and then um, how you would come up with the, with the formula, okay? So... Um, let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to a sample problem. Here we got a sample pro problem over here. You can see it says, determine the empirical formula of a compound where a sample has been analyzed and found to contain 9.58 grams of carbon and 2.42 grams of hydrogen. Right? So you know that this substance is made up of carbon and hydrogen and you know that there's 9.58 grams of carbon and 2.42 grams of hydrogen. All right, so uh, how would we come up with this uh, empirical formula? Okay, so 
Real quickly, I'm going to go ahead and go over this. Here's the steps for determining our empirical formula. Okay, and we're going to follow these steps. Uh, maybe all of them. You'll notice there's step 1A and 1B. Sometimes you use step 1A, some step, sometimes you don't. That's why I call it 1A, 1B. Sometimes you start here, sometimes you start here, depending what's given. Okay, you will note that you are given grams of each substance. 1A says if you're given percentages, assume 100 grams and turn percentages into grams of each element. Okay. That's not this case. We're not given percentages. We'll do that in our second problem. So this is the first problem. Um, we'll, um, this, yeah, this is the first sample problem. We're starting with 1B. We're given grams. So we're going to give, uh, given grams, convert grams of each element to moles of each element. Then you go to step two. Once you have moles of uh, uh, your two elements, in this case, carbon and hydrogen, identify the element with the least number of moles and divide the moles of each element by the least number of moles. That's so you can get a ratio between the two. And then number three, use the resultant numbers as your subscripts in the empirical formula. That's usually where it ends. Really, it could be as simple as one, two, uh, three steps. One B, two, and three. One A is just kind of one quick step, and I'll show you how that happens. Number four, sometimes you don't get nice full whole numbers, and you know what our subscripts need to be whole numbers, right? So if one of the subscripts ends up as a fraction or decimal, uh, multiply all the subscripts by a number that will make all of the numbers integers. And she does a good example. Uh, uh, Melissa Maribel does a good example of that one. I didn't do one uh, like this, if I remember correctly, only because of time. I could have done another one, but that would be one more. <laughs> so you can look at Marissa Mar Maribel's at the end where she talks about you know, multiplying by numbers like one, two, three, four, because you end up with sometimes fractions and decimals of ratios. But we'll, we'll get to that. So I'll just, I'm just going to go ahead and go over and do these sample uh, step or these steps, do the sample problems. Okay. So let's go ahead and do those. Okay. So uh, you're given two elements and you're given grams for each. So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm given 9.58 grams of carbon and I'm given 2.42 grams of hydrogen. Right. So um, I got grams of both things. Okay. Well, Carbon's much heavier than hydrogen. Carbon's like the got atomic mass. Of, here, let's take a look at the atomic masses. Carb, each carbon atom weighs 12.01 atomic mass units, or you know, 12.01 grams per mole. One mole of hydrogen is only 1.01 gram per mole. So um, if you had the same an equal number of moles of carbon and hydrogen, they would weigh differently. That's why we're gonna we're having to do this, because they weigh differently. Right? So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna need to turn them to moles. And we just saw the molar masses for this, the atomic masses. So I'm going to convert both grams of hydrogen, grams of carbon. And I'm doing this in parallel here so you can see that we're doing it for both of them. Now that we know how to convert grams to moles, we can go ahead and do that. And so molar mass for carbon is 12.01 um, 12, 12 grams per mole. And for hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams. All right. So let's do the calculations. I'm, like I said, I'm doing this. You could do one first and the other, but I'm doing them in parallel so you can see basically we're doing the same thing for both. Uh, we're just doing it for both. You know, 9.58 grams of carbon divided by 12.01 looks to be 0 0.7977. The more decimals you get in here uh, on these calculations, the bit since they're ratios, the better uh, your answer is. Mostly because, well, um, once you start rounding, it throws the ratios off. So what did I say? 0.7977. Okay. Um, how did I get that? 0.7977 moles of carbon. And this one down here, 2.42 divided by 1.01. 2.42 divided by 1.01. And that gives me... 2.396. All right, so let me put that down. 2.396 moles of hydrogen. Okay. Don't mind me. Sometimes I put moles. Sometimes I put MOL. Same thing. All right, so now we know how many moles of carbon is in this sample and how many moles of hydrogen was in the sample. And remember that mole ratios and atom ratios are the same thing. So if we can get this ratio of moles of carbon to moles of hydrogen, 
we can also get the, the uh, ratios of atoms of carbon and atoms of hydrogen. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at both these numbers at 0 .9, 0 0.7977 compared to 2.396. This one's smaller, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both numbers by 0 0.7977 to get a ratio, right? This number divided by itself means one mole of carbon. Basically what it's saying is for every one mole of carbon, for every one mole of carbon, we're going to divide this one by 0.7977. Okay. Don't make the mistake like a lot of students do, of dividing this one also by itself. Because if you divide every number by itself, all the numbers by itself, you're going to get a one-to-one -one for everything. <laughs> That's going to uh, – the, the answer will always be just one, one and one of each. You divide both of these number of moles by the smaller of the two. Okay? Then we divide them by the same number. So 2.396 divided by – 0.7977 is going to give me, I got my calculator down here, 3.0. You know, and they don't always come out so nice and even, but usually they do. And the problems I give you, mostly they will. Sometimes, you know, in some complicated problems, they'll you can, you can have like some you know crazy formulas and some crazy decimals, but we'll keep it relatively simple right now. So this tells you that there's one. For every one mole of carbon, there's three moles of hydrogen, which also means that for every one atom of carbon, there are three atoms of hydrogen. So our empirical formula is going to be CH3, and there is your answer. The three, this 3.0 is, I mean, let me do this in a different color because I can't. Um, this 3.0 right here, is where you get the three here. And since this one doesn't have a subscript since the one worked, right? So this is your one. And remember, we don't put a one here. Okay. So that's how you do this. Uh, let's go ahead and recap real quick. You take the grams of each, that's step 1B, and then turn them to moles. Then you compare the two numbers, decide which one's smaller. This one is smaller than this one. And divide both of them by that number here and here. And that's going to give you the um, mole, uh, one mole of the smaller uh, moles for every however many the larger moles. It doesn't always end up being three. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. And that becomes a subscript. Okay? So that's how we do that one. We'll go on to the second one. Okay, let's try sample problem number two. Okay, this one says... Determine the empirical formula of a compound that is composed of 86.62% lead, PB, and 13.38% oxygen. Okay. So uh, you'll notice the big difference between this one and the first problem we did is that this one gives us percentages. The other one gave us grams. Okay. But you'll recall that we have step, and these steps have a step 1A. And 1A, this time we're going to use it because it said in step 1A it says if you're given percentages, Assume 100 grams, and there's 100 grams of the compound, and turn percentages into grams of each element. Okay. What happens when you do that? When you assume 100 grams of the compound, that means whatever your percentage is, that turns into grams. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write down here, um, I've got 86.62% lead. So 86.62% of 100 grams is of lead. And, and is 86.62 grams, and 13.38% of, uh, of 100 grams is 13.38 grams of oxygen. Okay. Now, how can I do that? Some people might go, wait, you're given percentages. How can you just turn them into grams? The assumption was that, first off, these elements are going to always be, doesn't matter the size of the sample, the little chunk, or whenever I say it's sample, it's a little chunk of something. Um, so these are always going to be in the same proportion, so or the same percentages. So let's say I'm going to move this up here just to show you here real quick. Um, let's say you had a piece that is 100 gram. Right? That means that 70. What did we say? 82. Was it 86.62? Right. Uh, so 86.62% of 100 grams is 86.62 grams. And 13.38% of 100 grams is 13.38 grams. Okay. 
So that's what that if we had a hundred gram chunk, that would be the same. I mean, it would work out the same. We'd get the same answer if we had a smaller piece. Let's say it was a 10 gram chunk. Then 70, uh, sorry, 86.62 percent of this of 10 grams would be but 8.662 grams and 13.38 grams of 10 grams. That 13.38 percent of 10 grams is 1.338 grams. Okay, so the proportions are the same, and you'd end up when you turn grams to moles, you'd get a different number of moles for each, but the ratios are going to be the same. I could even do this with like, you know, somewhere in between, let's say it was 35.3 gram chunk. Then I can figure out what, you know, 86.62% of 35.3 grams is, that would be that, that would be lead. And then the 13.38 grams, and I'm not going to do it right now in the interest of time, but 38.38% of 35.3 grams. And I could get those numbers and use those. But why make your my why why make life difficult? You'd have to go ahead and do a next two extra calculations. 35.3 grams times 70 86.62 uh, percent, and then 35.3 times 13.38, or you know I guess whatever grams you got here, you can subtract that from the total and get that here. But you know that all looks much more. Just assume 100 grams. You'll get the same answer either way. So just assume 100 grams. All right, so we'll go back to this. We're going to assume that we have 100 grams of this. So now our 86.62% turns into 86.62 grams. And 13.38% turns into 13.38 grams. Now we're on step 1B. Right? That's where we uh, started that last one, right? Now that we're in step 1B, we need to now go ahead and turn our grams into moles. And that means we need to go ahead and look up atomic masses. Uh, I think we already, uh, well, Let's take a look at what they are. For lead, lead is down here, 207.2. Oxygen's up here at 16. Remember those? All right, so lead is 207.2. I got to put that at first because I remember. I don't remember that. Grams of lead for every one mole of lead. And oxygen, uh, the atomic mass is 16 grams of oxygen per mole of oxygen okay so now we can go ahead and go all right let me go ahead and do some calculations calculator by the way people like see me kind of going down what's he doing 86.62 divided by 207.2 that's going to give me 0. 0.4181 so that's 0.4181 moles of lead and the 13.38 grams of oxygen turns into 13.38 divided by 16 it's going to give us 0.8363 0.8363 of oxygen. Okay, so now I got these two moles. Moles of lead is 0 0.4181. Moles of oxygen is 0 0.8363. And you'll notice that the moles of lead is smaller than the moles of oxygen. Even though we had much more grams, lead's pretty heavy, right? So, um, so we end up with less moles. So that's the number we're going to divide by. There's step three. Divide both of them by 0 0.418. Divide this one by 0 0.418. And when I do that, I'm going to need to, let me see if I can move me over here to the side here. Oh, don't want to do that. Get in the way. All right. Um, so 0. 0.418 over 0. 0.418 is one mole of lead. And 0. 0.8363 divided by 0. 0.4181. Okay, did I not put that last one in there? Okay. It gives me 2.0001. You won't exactly get a 2, but you'll get pretty close. I just go 2.0 moles of O. All right, so this would be 0.4181, but, you know, whatever. Um, so one mole of lead for every two moles of oxygen. That must mean that our formula is PB, and the subscript for PB is 1, and O2, the subscript for oxygen is 2 because of this 2 right here. 
Okay, so there is your answer. Right? The two is a subscript for oxygen here. The one is a subscript for lead, and therefore we put them together. There's your formula. Okay, that's the second sample problem. Let's go ahead and go on to a third one with three elements. Okay, let's do uh, the third sample problem. So if you look up there, it says the sample problem says, what is the empirical formula for a compound composed of 62.02% carbon, 10.43% hydrogen, and 27.54% oxygen? What? Three elements? How are we going to do this? Well, actually, it turns out that you do it the same way you did the other ones. Uh, you just, you know, just you're going to turn grams of carbon into moles, grams of hydrogen into moles, and grams of oxygen into moles. And, um, oh, I forgot to put oxygen, but, you know, it's, oh, oxygen. Um, and uh, my bad. And, and then you just do the same thing. You turn them all into moles. Then you figure out which one's the least, and you get the ratio between all three of them. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to get right to it. Um, so we have, what, 62.02 grams of carbon, right? Because remember, our percentages, we're turning them into grams. That's step 1A. 10.43 grams of hydrogen and 27.54 grams of oxygen. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert all of them into moles. Right. And we have to look up the atomic masses of each. Actually, I'm gonna, you can look them up if you want, right, on the periodic table. But, um, you know, we've used carbon, hydrogen, oxygen previous ones, so we already looked them up, and plus I already have them memorized after all those years that I've taught. <laughs> so carbon's atomic mass is 12.01, hydrogen's is 1.01, and oh, this quick tip here is getting in my way. Uh, oxygen's is 16.00 grams of oxygen per mole, grams of hydrogen per mole, I put all these things in all the time, um, all the units in, because uh, every element's different. So uh, for for like Avogadro's number, just, I just put atoms or molecules because it doesn't matter. From element to element, they're all the same. Um, all right, so um, let's go ahead and turn our 62.02 grams uh, of carbon to moles, and then well, let's do all these calculations. So here we go. Uh, 62.02 divided by 12.01 gets us 5.164, right? So for carbon, it's 5.164 moles of carbon, right? So in a 100-gram sample, there's 62.02 grams of carbon. That 62.02 grams of carbon represents 5.164 moles of carbon. All right, um, for hydrogen, 10.43, 10.43 divided by 1.01 .01 gives us 10.33, 10.33, let's go ahead and put that in here, 10.33 moles of hydrogen. Oh, I'm already seeing like this number is twice as big as that number, so I can already see it coming. Um, 27.54 grams of oxygen is how many moles? 27.54 divided by 16. 27 is 1.721. 1.721 moles of oxygen, right? So 27.54 divided by 16 is 1.721. 10.43 divided by 1.01 .01 is 10.33. And 62.02 divided by 12.01 is 5.164. Okay. All right. Now, we do just like we did before. We looked at which one has the least moles. There's three of them this time. But still, you just of all three of them, which one has the least? And 1.721 is the smallest. So we're going to divide all of them by 1.721. Divide by 1.721 there. Divide by 1.721 there. Remember, we're going to divide them all by the same number, not by themselves. Otherwise, it'll all just be one to one to one. And what good does that give us? All right. So. This does tell you, since it's 1.721 over 1.721, we know that there's one mole of O2, or sorry, one mole of O for every, let's see, ratio of carbon, 5.164, 5.164 divided by 
1.721 is going to give us 3.001. Oh, 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 3.0. Okay. There's three times as many moles of carbon as there are oxygen, and therefore there's three times as many atoms of carbon as there are oxygen. And as I told you, there seems to be twice as many moles of hydrogen as carbon. So my guess is that the moles of hydrogen here is going to be 6. Uh, 10.33 divided by 1.721 is 6.0023. Yeah, just round it off to 6.0. 6.3. 6.0. Of H. All right, so three, six, and one. These are our subscripts now for each element. We came up with the formula. Isn't that amazing? You guys came up with the formula. C3H6O. Okay, so that's either there's a thing called acetone. People use it to take a to take a fingerprint. I mean, uh, sorry, a, a nail polish off and stuff like that, or it could be uh, what we call hexanoic acid. Uh, regardless, several different substances could have this empirical formula. We just got the empirical formula, okay? So that's it. Notice, same steps. The only thing is that here we had three elements versus other times with two elements. Sometimes you have four elements. Um, so um, you know, no matter how many elements, you find out how many moles of each. And then you find out which of them has the least number of moles and divide by that number, divide everyone by that number, and that gives you your subscripts. Okay? All right. One last thing before I finish this video, and that is I didn't do the fourth type. Remember I told you that there's a fourth type because there is, in our, in our steps right here, there is a fourth step. If one of the subscripts end up, you know, all our subscripts were nice and whole numbers, so they became our subscripts. If one of the subscripts ends up as a fraction or a decimal, usually like 0.5, or 0.25 or 0.33 because they're you know decimals of one third, one fourth, one half, two thirds, three fourths would be 0.75. You multiply all the subscripts so you keep them the same ratio by a number that's going to give you all whole numbers. Um, I'm not doing it because of the length of the video, but if you look at Melissa Maribel's two or two and a half minute video or two minutes fifty whatever it was, um, she does one that requires step four. We did not do any. That required step four, but the Melissa Maribel video that I also go ahead and uh, um, put up for you um, also uh, does that. Okay, so um, that's all I have. This one. I hope this is helpful.